Hi guys and welcome to Angling For You and welcome to my sunny deck. Phenomenal weather again, back, back with the glorious weather but unfortunately no fishing as of yet. So today's video is a little bit about uh, elastic care. So again we're going to go into how, how to store the top kits or a, a method of how I store the top kits. Little items that we can use to make the elastic last longer, what we've got to look at when elastics can potentially be out of wear and how much use and another couple of connections of what else you can use instead of dacrons and stomfros so uh, let's uh, flip the camera get nice and close and we'll uh, go a little bit into it right guys before we go into sort of real close-up um, detail that we're going to do on the top out of the connector part of it let's just get a top kit and and have a little talk about the ways I sort of look at keeping the elastics healthy now obviously these are new elastics um, but I get a lot of heavy use out of my elastics and it's good to keep on top of them at the end of the day if you're doing a full big sort of kit um, with sort of like 12 top kits or more you know you want that elastic most of them are over a tenner to last as much time as you can get out of them with them being sort of an, an expensive commodity although they don't last forever most elastics if dread well will will last you because some, some of them are up upward of two seasons if they're stored correctly and you are you know not ri ridiculously overusing them so the first little tool i'm going to show you and a lot of people might see it a lot of people might might not have seen it it's a bit more difficult for the top kit that i've got but I'll, I'll still explain it so these are elastic aligners so when you uh, put your pole away effectively you fold it in half like this now the elastics laid on the it's not sharp but it's laid on the ridge of the pole section and obviously that can cause to abrasion um, it can cause to indentations in the elastic so normally most poles will have this little nose cone that i've got but i'll still try to explain it now what what this little connector does if, if you have a look on camera it's got a curved bit on the top where the elastic seats into it like so so you can push it onto the elastic and it's really simple one of the ends goes down there into the top kit on this side and as you guessed it the other one goes into the other end now obviously i struggle because i've got a bush and a, and a nose cone on there and any other people would probably just have another section and would drop in really easy now what i do is because it's got a nose cone and a bush i just hook it into one side of of my top kit and then obviously the nose cone's got the ptfe which keeps it fine and you'll find that it stops it uh, from you know putting any indentations on that elastic and it's just a really cheap really simple way of looking after the sort of the middle part of your elastic now like i said it's not they're not super sharp um and you know nine times out of ten you might you might get away with it but if you've got a potentially tight tube and you know it it, it can cause damage to your elastic so the second part of it is again something relatively inexpensive and I'll be honest I've had this god 10 years maybe um, and what it is is lubricant it's a special lubricant that's for elastics um, and you know you can get there's lots of newer versions than this out now this one's an old Preston slip one um, pure, and it's pure pole elastic lubricant um, and effectively what it's doing is putting moisture into, into your elastic and allowing it to slide more freely now we all know that elastics um if they've been out in the sun or you know they've been stretched i know you, you've been fishing you've been in water you've got to remember these top kits that if they're in your, your shed they're sat red hot and you know it can dry the elastic out and what you want to be doing with this is putting little, little bits on and stretching it out now what i'm going to do is zoom that camera around and we can have a look at that and then i've, I've got some some methods of storage which a lot of you all will have and know anyway um but also i thought i'd have a little run through the other two elastics and the setups uh, that we've put in the other top kits for for the uh, response pole so let's uh, zoom that camera in and we'll uh, have a little bit of look of how we uh, lubricate this uh, elastic right guys so it's relatively straightforward in regards to to the elastics um, when you unscrew them they've got sort of like a it's not a pipette but it's it's similar a small hole where you can 
you can turn it over and it comes out sort of nice and steady and uh, what you want to be doing is getting it just putting some just before the tip of your pole and give just giving it a stretch it's good to sort of lift your pole up into different angles i could just move this pole sort of on a downward angle like that and it and it'll run it'll run into the pole and you can instantly sort of feel that elastic uh, lubricant doing its work sometimes i pull out sort of a foot or so and i just pour a little a little bit into the tip of the pole and so it's working down the pole and i just give it a nice a nice stretch and I'll, I'll, straight away you can see that it makes such a, a difference to it the other things you can do with it especially nowadays with the puller roller pullers or, or side pullers is to just put a little bit on this end as well just into the bushing and again just give give it a nice pull stretching a couple of meters out and that'll work it into that end they're the two areas on your pole where you are going to have the most strain is where you're picking this end up and it's getting pulled out of this bush and then when you obviously your fish is taking it it's going to be pulling it from the other end and both of those are obviously massively under strain when you're fishing um, on a day-to-day -day basis with your top kits and that's where you're going to get the nine times out of the ten uh, you're going to get the chances of, of, of cracking elastic or breaking elastic so another um, test if you're looking at elastic is the main like I said before the main part is going to be here behind the bead or behind the dacron or the connector depending on what you're doing so you, you want to just stretch that under quite a lot of strain and if there's no strain marks stress marks where the colors faded or there's no cracking which sometimes happens on the elastic that's what you want to be looking for if you see that and the rest of the elastics fine just pull out an extra sort of couple of centimeters tie a new knot slide the bead down the elastic first tie a new knot slide the bead back up to it and, you, and you're, you're good to go um, and obviously it, you'll get longer life out your elastics without having to redo it you don't want your elastics too tight so if if you have already got it to the maximum of tightness that you want you know i wouldn't suggest doing it but what will happen is when you set your elastics at home unless you seriously get someone to, to stretch them out um, over the garden you will have a bit of strain loss and you probably look at having to trim off around a four inch mark five inch maybe depending on what fish you're catching and how soft the elastic is um to tighten it back up some people like it really soft on the tape but it's good to, to trim a little bit back and so it's not like dangling out of your pole too much so moving on to this next bit you can see there's a, a bead on here um, and that's completely different to how the dacron connector is it is a dacron connector bead but normally would have obviously the dacron uh, on the back of it now this method is just simple it, realistically you, you need a diamond eye threader and you slide the bead onto the line you tie a knot and that's the knot where you push your bead towards it so it can't go anywhere um, and you connect the loop behind the bead or some people connect it they pull it a little bit and they connect it between the bead and the knot just there um, I pr if, if I'm connecting on it I prefer to put my connection behind the bead just feel like it's a little bit um, safer but that's completely up to you um, it's not that I normally have dacrons um, but I wanted to set this one up to show you the reason I don't usually use these too much I feel that the line eventually will cut into the elastic um, so it's not my common pref preference but I didn't have any more dacron connectors and I thought it'd be a good idea to put one of these on to show you what that looks like until obviously my new dacron comes and I'll put a, a proper dacron hair on there again um, so just a little bit of uh, a different way of, of connecting it what I'm going to do is uh, in fact just we'll just show you the, the, the side connection on this one um, so this is a proper Preston bead um, like I said before I used the casing of a Stomfro connector to, to use as a bead you can use whatever you feel comfortable this is what they suggest is just a normal Preston feeder bead I have actually got some in the post which I'll show you closer up on social media um, just so you can see but what I'll do is I'll flip back to main camera we'll talk a little bit about storage and we'll talk a little bit about the elastic choices that are in my other two poles right guys so with the response uh, pole and this is the case with probably pretty much every pole that you buy 
you usually get some top kits that are in a tube and then you'll get one inside the pole whether that's a match kit or a power kit in this case a power kit um, and that doesn't have a tube because it's within the pole itself so you do have to buy an extra tube um, to put them in some people don't some people just get one sort of big tube and throw them all in some have <clears throat> different cases and things like that to put them in but I would suggest buying an extra tube which I will do obviously once we, we uh, when it comes available to do so um, I'm, I'm a bit finicky with tubes I don't like to buy them online just in case I get the wrong diameter or anything I like to take it into the shop and, and, and get one so it'll sit up it's not going anywhere it'll sit happily in there until until that day so tube wise these are the tubes that come with a response and pretty much say it's similar with any poles uh, especially new poles um they're essential piece of kits uh, in my opinion you, you need something to look after your top kits most top kits range from 40 to 100 pound you don't want to be um just breaking the ends of them when you go into you put in your rod bag into the shed or into the car you don't want to risk dinging the end of them i think you know it's uh it's definitely not worthwhile so as you can see like before they're folded up inside and obviously you you to fold them you obviously bring them back and fold them back to this way and you know it's pretty simple and I, and again i've got one of those little feeder beads on the end of it coming down to this end obviously dacron connected and um, elasticated through what i'll do is i'll just uh, to set them get them both out of the cases and lay them out and uh, we'll see what elastics we've got in them and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of chat about that right guys so i've got my three kits here now you can see all three this will give you a little bit of variation of what i put as, as beads and what can be done so like i said this first one's got the stomp throw connector and like i said before super simple uh, and, and easy to use this one's got a small dacron bead uh, which i've taken off and this one is a proper preston feeder bead um uh, sorry not a feeder bead a preston elastic bead uh, which sits perfectly within the the ptfe on the side of the puller uh, the puller bush now it you can put whatever you want sometimes i just tie a loop um with a, sp a spider knot uh if i've got a thick enough elastic so i just leave it as a loop but you know beads are as good as anything it's uh, up to your personal preference now like i said all, all of these elastics um I've, I've got within uh we started i will i had a, a hybrid fusion elastics which is yeah 18 to 20 uh which i already had before we um we went to lockdown until i can get some more pressing elastics i've got uh, sorry any more uh progen elastics i've got a couple of matrix elastics in these two um the this one is sort of six to eight um it's just a hollow it's um the oh uh, there's a blank on it i have i have got them written written down and i'll I, i'll put them back up for you but it is um i think it's a dual it's a dual car the matrix dual car um and it uh it's that's like a six to eight you know sort of medium sized um f1s and things like that um and then this one's a little bit a little bit bigger it's like a 10 to 12 um and you know again it just covers the whole range because obviously this fishing this is my only pole uh, this is obviously going to be a thick margin this one's going to be sort of your smaller um shallow fishing this is going to be a paste and most across um across lines and things like that um so it's good to have that variation of things for your pole if you're fishing at just out and out margin you've got a main pole then go with thicker elastics um i like to have that opportunity to use different types and obviously you can see the difference in the dacron connectors a smaller connector and a larger connector for the difference of elastics and that's important as well um, most of them have a range on them and they'll tell you which elastics that they that they're used for that's the best guide to go for there's no hard and fast brand upon brand uh, is it, it'll sort of tell you what size elastics you should use um, there's no point in me going through individual elastics and individual dacron connectors if you're asking me my opinion on my favourite, I prefer the Drennans. I think that the, the Dacron hair is quite stiff um, and it's easier to get your line off uh, when, it, when obviously you've connected your line to, to your Dacron. So that's, that's the Dacron I prefer. 
um, out, out of most, but there's you know everywhere sort of does them just as good. But um, yeah, so that that's that's really what I want to show you today, and, and and how to look after it. You'll get a lot more life out of it. You'll get a lot stretchier elastic and, and a lot more free flowing elastic that'll last a lot longer. And it just makes total sense to to look after those items, and you know you end up uh, with more fish in the net and less breakages and more for your money and that's that's what we want from from his gear the more you look after it the better it's going to be um so thank you for uh, supporting us on, you know in this this crazy time and a lot of you've been on the the live feeds on on fridays which is seven o'clock for the facebook um lots of uh, people watching commenting you know having their 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 sort of interaction which has been great um and then again on the instagram at eight o'clock um, say exactly the same great interaction um, yeah keep doing that keep sending us your comments we'll keep trying to do as videos as much as possible I know they've slowed down a bit so I've covered most things and I've tried to, I'm trying to get all the products and things to do and um, we've also got one that I'm doing on monster baits and dips on uh, flavoring so that's a good one to watch obviously this one and then the next uh, poll review which will be coming out as soon as I, I can uh, can do that and there'll be a poll review on that and then there'll be a side by side comparison with the uh, w with the response so that should be a really good uh, video to watch as well so uh, thank you much very much for watching like share subscribe with your friends and uh, let's keep uh, growing the channel and giving out that information to people and fingers crossed we'll be out on that bank soon come on Boris let us out to fish thanks a lot guys see you soon Ta -ra.